Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer Boyd. We have a lot to talk about. First of all, I want to start out with what's going on in Hawaii, Mauna Kea. You can see the uh, the time lapse here. It is snowing. There were some blizzard warnings in effect up there at over 13,000. But this storm track is dipping all the way south and nailing Hawaii. And that is the storm track that will change the weather pattern across the west and finally deliver some snow. There's some interesting little nuances going on in the forecast. Um, and I'm going to talk all about that today and what I think about it. I want to take you to the setup here. Um, the big map, this is the infrared satellite across the, uh, the Pacific. Look at the dip in the storm track. Um, and you can see it. Uh, there's actually two to three lows. Low pressure is kind of swinging down, being guided by the jet, and they're running right across Hawaii and the volcanoes. Um, so that's what's going to do its best to break down this very strong high that's anchored across the west. There's even a little low and a cold front kind of running over the top of it right now. It's going to swing, swinging through Idaho, Montana, and then down through Wyoming and may brush the northern mountains of Colorado. But that is really minor compared to what we're going to see with this series is two to three, as it looks to me, two to three different storm systems for next week across the west. And, you know, when I look at it, uh, it, the first one is going to get sacrificed, and I talked about this all last week, how this would probably play out. The first one will get weaker and weaker and weaker as we move into the forecast period, and that's the way it's looking. It looks like it's mainly uh, the purpose of the storm will be to break down and dislodge and move the high, and then what it will do is grease the skids for the second and third. And, and my question now is, will the second storm be somehow absorbed into the third and become a larger storm, or will... The second would be very small, and the third would be the biggest of the three. So um, all of those possibilities are on the table. I'll show you one interpretation of this um, GFS model, American model here. Notice what happens as I move this into the future. There's that little low and cold front that drops down through Wyoming, and this is on Sunday morning, and that would likely uh, bring some wind to Colorado, but kind of wash out as it hits the drier air over Colorado. And so that last little ridge part, that the little ridge over Colorado with the high um, northern mountains of Colorado could be, see a couple of snow showers, but then it's gone and it's over. So let's refocus. Here comes the first storm. This one is uh, on the 6th and the 7th affecting the west. And again, what its purpose is, is to really just break down the high and dislodge it, move it out into the Pacific to establish a storm track. And the amounts, the forecast have been getting lighter and lighter and lighter each day as expected for a lot of the ski areas. And you can see it does. There's snow there through Idaho and Montana, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming. Um, there are a few pockets of some moderate to heavy snow, but in most places it's going to be it's going to be light to moderate. And I'll show you what I'm thinking with that. So that'll run us. There's the morning of the 7th. And you can see uh, the storm, the low, there, there's really not a whole lot of wind up with it. Um, there's still some residual snow, but it's going to be, um, it'll be fading on the 7th. And by the 8th, it's gone. Um, so let's move into the next period. So there's another second storm. You can kind of see it moving through right there. There's some snow that reemerges in Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, northern Utah, and in Colorado on the 8th into the 9th. That, to me, looks pretty minor. Now, here comes the main, what appears to be the main event now, this third storm system. Um, and here it is, uh, between the 9th and the 10th, coming in a little bit further to the south. And what that means is that it should bring some snow into the Sierra. I'm backing it up now. You can kind of see what it does. It does drop snow in the Sierra, Tahoe down to Mammoth, and then it kind of brings snow into southern Utah uh, as well with that third low. And here's the 10th. It winds up in Colorado to a pretty good uh, as a pretty good low. Uh, potentially, as this has got to hit uh, Prague down to 988, which is, is a good low. Uh, and it's, it'd be a southern track. It'd be a, um, a setup, an Albuquerque-type low. Um, that winds some snow back into Colorado. Uh, that could be good for the Front Range High Peaks, Central to Northern Mountains, Southern Mountains. And that, that may be the biggest storm of the three. And then it moves away. So uh, two to three different storms. Uh, third one might end up being the largest of the three. Um, let me show you what I'm thinking as far as totals between today and the 7th, um, between today and late on the 7th, so all of the 7th, you can see the numbers. They're mainly light to moderate through Colorado, Utah, nothing in California. Up in Wyoming, though, and Montana, they're definitely moderate to, in some cases, a couple of heavy pockets up there, which is outstanding, and then heavy snow up in the Pacific Northwest, moderate to heavy up there into uh, Banff, western Alberta. Now, here's the big period. Um, the 8th through the 12th. 
So this is, uh, this is total snow between the 8th and the 12th. And you can see there's some big numbers here. One to two feet in, in parts of Utah and Colorado, possible, moderate, uh, maybe a couple of heavy pockets up in Wyoming and Montana, heavy snow up in the Pacific Northwest, moderate to heavy up in BC and Western Alberta. Um, and the Sierra gets a nice foot, a little, maybe foot and a half of snow right there. Um, so, and this is the, really the period to watch, obviously, with the second and third low. If the third low becomes the biggest one, then these numbers are not out of the question. Um, and so that's, that's really what's on the table at this point. The first low becomes the sacrifice, and then it sets up potentially a second and third low. So there you go. That's the way it looks to me right now. I'll keep things updated. Always appreciate you guys tuning in here. Take care. Have a great weekend.